Hello everyone, welcome back. This is part three of this news bulletin for today, Thursday, August 30th, 2012. I'm Darko. Check out my website, ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012-2013. Okay, so headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, and now that I got that over with, I'm ready to continue and finish up here. Hurricane Isaac brings thousands of National Guard troops to the region, so that's right, they were all ready to go, see? And uh, we talked about police outnumbering the convention protesters by four to one in Tampa. And we were talking about this drone that they're going to have on standby that uh, when you go in there and talk to the, they came out later and said drones won't patrol the Tampa during uh, the RNC. They said it's completely inaccurate and went on to say that they misconstrued what they had said. See, uh, but when you go down there, they did. They said that Mr. Winter did not, however, back off from the other statement he made on Thursday regarding the company's role in operating drones during the convention. We are continuing to report our story. So this is interesting because even if they say that they're not, you know that they are because I covered that. What was it, Miami Date or something? That car convention, uh, all those low riders and stuff like that. And, and what did they have? They had a they had a little mini drone, a little remote controlled drone, a spy drone. Uh, and somebody caught it on their camera phone. So you can be rest assured they're going to have it down there in Florida. Uh, the sinister Wraith landing drone capable of deploying smoke, taking pictures, and even firing fearsome 250 RPM shotguns on standby for the convention if the protesters get out of hand. So this is all building off this last video, which I said, what? That we live in a scientific dictatorship. You don't really have much of a choice. If they had their, if you, if they had a choice, they would just not have you even vote at all. And that's why they're making harder and harder protests, free speech zones. They put up these big walls or gates. Uh, huge police uh, steering the protest. So I mean, for these people that think that they're free, it's just like, well, you're not. And so you can go out there and see how much you're not free, and you can protest. And what are you going to accomplish from that? All you do is you. You draw attention to the police state, which is good in a way, so you can go ahead and do that. Because it's just like all the phony domestic terrorist attacks and terrorist uh, business. It's good. It's good for the military for, because they can combine the federal, state, local, and fuse them together. They have fusion centers, uh, share all the data, uh, you know, state, local, um, municipalities and cities and that and have now become federalized and that's why you see cops militarized they're getting they're getting funds from federal funds to to basically militarize themselves and so it's the same thing with these protests at these conventions and stuff like that um, you know whether, whether it's G8 or NATO um, the only reason they want you to come out is so that so that they could have their own provocateurs i.e. the police and that uh, dressed up as protesters they'll be called anarchists that's what i love right they always call them anarchists and destroy private property and um and then they'll run back behind police lines they've been caught on on uh, on tape doing this provocateuring so then they can clamp down and they kind of unleash holy hell with all of the little toys and gadgets and this legitimizes the police state at each of one of these events and they get more money for it so with all these national guard all these police and that what happened with all the Hurricane Isaac coming and and uh, what is it, Pat Robertson saying God moved it because he likes the Republicans. Minimal protest at Republican National Convention, so not that many people even showed up. And I know there's uh, some bad stories changing gears here uh, to this story. Why does the U.S. government treat military vets like human garbage? Um, you know, we've caught the story of what I think I believe it was the Air Force dumping bodies in the garbage dump. Um, and this is how, and this is how it is. It's not just civilians that are being treated like lab rats and sprayed and and um, and tested on. Uh, these guys, especially these guys who are supposedly joined to defend our freedom, right? Again, uh, you know, now I know after doing five years in the Marine Corps and doing four years of college, I I now know that we're not free. That I wasn't, I didn't join uh, to uh, to fight and defend our freedom because we were never free to begin with. So the, a lot of these guys come back, and that's why they become threats, because they realize that they weren't over there to fight the terrorism uh, overseas, that they that they weren't there defending the Constitution or fighting for freedom. And that's why vets uh, tend to become uh, enemies of the state, or at least in these watch lists. Multiple tours of duty. They keep sending young men and women back to Iraq and Afghanistan over and over again without any regard to consequences and what they might be. An astounding 20% of all active duty soldiers in the U.S. and Army uh, U.S. Army are on at least their third tour of duty. 
many others have done four or more. And he moved record number of suicides. The fact that many of our soldiers are spending way too much time in active war zones, and it was a big reason why military suicides are at a record pace so far. During the month of July, there was 56 suicides and the U.S. military in just 31 days. This is something I didn't know. Paying to get your medal. Many U.S. soldiers return home uh, from war only to find that they're being billed by their own government. One soldier even discovered that he was going to have to pay $21 shipping fee to get his Purple Heart. An endless waiting for veterans' benefits. You would think that soldiers returning from war should quickly and easily be able to apply for their benefits that they are owed. Unfortunately, the complete opposite is the case. As he's written before, applying for benefits is extremely complicated and VA employees are actually paid bonuses for denying claims. That explains why 70% of the claims submitted to the VA are refused or sent back. And lastly, horrific economic times. The unemployment rate for veterans is much higher than the overall rate of unemployment and they're losing their homes at a much faster rate than 200,000 military vets sleeping on the streets of America. Like I was saying, you know, when they come back and they realize what they what was happening, that they're not free, they're not fighting for freedom, that's why now when they start to speak out about it, you know, whether you believe in a stateless society or not, me, you know, people say I'm a naive. Well, I, I'd like to see a stateless society, i.e. no government, um, even being a former Marine, because I see that, you know, this could be a better thing. Let's take a chance. Let's try something that I think or I know has never really been tried in modern civilization, quote, modern civilization. So, whereas the track record of every other statist is bad. It's horrible, right? So, these people come back and then they start talking and they may actually garner support. And that's why they're on watch lists and being watched. And if they say things, they could be hauled off to mental hospitals. U.S. veterans forced to be sequestered in mental hospitals is indefinite detention. So, this individual was a former Marine and he was actually sentenced to 30 days detention in a psych ward. And the case was dismissed, citing the petition devoid of any factual allegations that could be reasonably expected to give rise to a case or controversy. So it was thrown out. But they're going to keep doing it anyways. But then things like this, this is what they this is what they push, right? No criminal charges for Marines who urinated on Afghan corpses may face reprimands for video. So they'll they'll do things like that though. You see the 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 irony there? Um, because what does it do? It makes it so that it pisses the Afghans off and it makes us uh, have to be there longer, right? Which they have no plan of ever getting out. Marines testing women in combat jobs this is another thing that they push. Female uh, Marines in uh, infantry. So it's not just that. They're not just pushing women in infantry jobs. They're pushing what? Gay troops okay to march in uniform at a gay pride parade for the first time ever. So they're pushing all these things, but they don't take care of the basics, which is uh, the vets when they come home. So let's, let's see how much of a vote you have, how much of a choice you have. And we, along with Governor Nathan Deal, proudly give 72 of our delegate votes to the next President of the United States, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan. <laughs> Three votes for, for Ryan. I, I... Okay. Hold on. Whoever controlled the microphone did a great job. <laughs> Could I please have the state of Georgia repeat your... And, uh, you know, I remember doing this mock election at my college in 2008, right before I left and graduated. And uh, it was supposed to be a big deal, and everybody got involved, especially the Ron Paulers. And I was part of that campaign, Ron Paul. And... Um, and so I guess my point is, is I remember the whole Obama thing was just totally uh, had so much support, so much funding. And of course, he went, uh, uh, won a landslide victory all across the boards. And it was back then that I started to realize that a lot of this was kind of a sham. You know, they rigged the rules to get their nominated person. Like in the primaries earlier this year in 2012, I remember seeing a news video where they didn't even know what they were doing. They had like a local news or a national news affiliate in there in this room in this uh, auditorium and they asked how many people voted for Romney and there was nobody that would raise their hand and they asked for people to vote for Ron Paul and they always raised their hands and yet Romney won by a, by a, by a landslide so a lot of shifty stuff going on I don't even know if, if I really trust Ron Paul uh, but I do know that if you are if you do have a bumper sticker like uh, for him supporting him then uh, you're going to be uh, targeted by state police via 
um, uh, federal agencies, i.e. fusion centers, warning them to look out for possible terrorists if you're a Ron Paul supporter. But you saw in that video, basically, uh, their microphone going out. Oh, a microphone problem. When it talks about Ron Paul, then uh, Yahoo fires reporter for Romney Slam. So uh, saying that they're, that said Romney's happy to party with black people drowning, uh, referring to the hurricane. Of course, that's good divide and conquer strategy. But I guess the point is, is that you can't talk about the globalist man, Romney. And of course, you had a police state there, right? Uh, breaking TSA invades the RNC. So, yeah, basically the TSA were doing uh, their little screening methods there at the convention. Remember uh, this from February 2012, TSA expects heaviest Super Bowl traveler volume ever. According to the TSA, Super Bowl fans may encounter TSA Visible Intermodal Prevention Response or Viper teams at local transportation venues, talking about these checkpoints, and they talk about federal, state, local to reduce potential terrorist risk to, to the traveling. And yes, they even had full body x-ray scanners there as well at the Super Bowl. Homeland Security campaign extends to sports, urging fans at professional sports events to keep their country safe by reporting anything suspicious. So we're talking about the snitch program. If you see something, say something. So the lesbianic woman says citizens play a critical role in reporting suspicious activities and threats to Big Brother. She also says information will be shared with officials trying to avert security breaches, but it's actually not to do that. G4S under fire after a nun breaks into a U.S. nuclear facility. So she's an 82-year-old nun, and she forced it to shut down. It's the U.S. government's only facility for storing weapons-grade enriched uranium, a key uh, component for nuclear bombs, using bolt cutters to get past the Y-12 National Security Complex in Tennessee. Or a jet skier that breaks through the JFK's $100 million security system. Well, it's good for the defense complex because they don't give a shit about thwarting terrorists because they are the ones that carry out the attacks to give them more money, more contracts. It's all business. And this is the way it's going to be. This is what I'm trying to say. Norway could have prevented Breivik massacre, says commission. Well, why didn't they, right? The guy's only going to get 21 years now in a nice cozy room. Fancy prison cell for Norway mass killer. So all this, right? And now Norway is going to step up their war on terror because of this guy who killed 77 people, could have been prevented, gets a fancy uh, room in uh, uh, 21 years, right? But no, you lose all your rights. This is letting you know, like the TSA, stripping you down, molesting your children, molesting old women in wheelchairs, um, uh, old people, nuns, 82-year-olds getting past high security, nuclear facilities, because they don't care about security. The only thing they care about is degrading you as a human being. So in other words, this isn't going to change. It's going to stay like this, and this is permanent. This just happens to be after 9-11. Just to let you know, as the economy degrades, or also security is going to increase, and it's not going anywhere. She says information will be shared with officials trying to avert security breaches. So all that, right? Get ready for TSA chat downs. Author tells the blaze about new airport security procedure you might not know about. They can pull you out of line and ask you where you're going, why, and if you choose not to answer, does that make you hostile? And now this airport-style screening is to be considered for trains and uh, tube stations in the United Kingdom, where they will check for weapons, explosives, chemical, and biological materials, like what they're doing in, uh, in Boston and that, right? They're putting up these little detectors for biological material. But what happens? Is it going to stop it? No, because when the government or the black ops or the black government or secret government wants a terrorist attack to happen, it will fucking happen. And it doesn't matter how much security you give up. Then you have what? Metro faces public backlash in Texas over counter-terror initiative. This was on a bus. And the Metro counter-terrorism exercise didn't round up any terrorists. Instead, they arrested 14 people, predominantly alleged prostitutes and dope smokers. They were so basically people, nonviolent crimes. The TSA also brought these operations to California as well. Orlando's iris scanners helped nab suspected pot smoker. So they don't know how they can watch a video, then rush to a scene and make an arrest based off a of video. Well, they actually can because the students in Pennsylvania who had a laptop given to them by the, by the school took it home and got arrested for having Mike and Ike's because they thought it was drugged. The FBI wants to share facial recognition software with all the states. Talking about free biometric systems, they also are going to trade motorist data to insurance companies. 
This is what I mean by federalizing the local police, the Missouri Police Intelligence Network. And they got these fusion centers for every state, and these fusion centers are linked in with Homeland Security. At America's biggest drone show, the focus shifts towards domestic skies or domestic terrorists. Police are to use drones for spying on citizens. Spying? That's why the police chiefs adopt a drone of conduct. We're going to surveil.